This is Hydra. It's the outermost moon of Pluto, orbiting at a distance just shy of 65,000 kilometers. Now, that orbital distance isn't from Pluto, but instead the center of mass of the Plutonian system, a point known as the barycenter. Because Charon, the largest moon of Pluto, is similar-ish in mass to the primary body of the system, the barycenter is actually situated outside of Pluto, about 960 kilometers above its surface. And it's this point that Hydra and all the other Plutonian bodies orbit. Quick tangent, if you're thinking, why doesn't this happen with our own moon, it actually does, but the barycenter of the Earth-Moon system is situated within the Earth, because the moon is much, much lighter than the mass of the Earth. Due to Hydra's distance from Pluto, the Hubble telescope was able to capture this tiny moon in these images taken in 2005. And yes, that is another moon in the Discovery image, that one is called Nix, and it was first spotted at the same time as Hydra. Like the other Plutonian moons, Hydra is named after a mythical beast associated with the Underworld. According to the myths, the multi-headed Hydra guarded Lake Lerner, which was thought to be the entrance to the Underworld, and one day, Heracles and his mate came along and killed Hydra. Nobed. Hydra, the moon, was given its name at the same time as its discovery pal, Nix, with both moons sporting the initials N and H as a tribute to New Horizons, a probe that would one day visit these moons. In fact, both moons were discovered while the New Horizons team used the Hubble telescope to search the skies around Pluto, trying to find potential hazards that could knock into the probe. A whole decade later, a New Horizons would photograph these moons up close, with the first multi-pixel image of Hydra taken at a distance of 640,000 kilometers, and eventually, New Horizons would get close enough to snap this photo, the highest resolution image of Hydra to date, taken at a distance of 231,000 kilometers. In this image, you can see at least three craters, meaning Hydra has been around long enough to bear the scars of several impacts. Using a technique called crater counting, you can determine something called a crater density, where the higher the crater density, the older the surface. For Hydra and Nix, they have a similar crater density, meaning they have been around for roughly the same amount of time. Looking at the older parts of Pluto and Charon's surface, and they too have a similar crater density to Nix and Hydra. What does this tell us? Well, if the surfaces are roughly the same age, then we can assume they all formed at the same time. It's thought that all the Plutonian moons formed from a huge impact that occurred about 4 billion years ago, where debris from this impact was flung up into space, and over time, formed the moons we see today. If this sounds familiar, it's because this is how the Earth's moon was formed. Now you may be thinking, this origin theory is a bit of a stretch considering we just counted a few poxy craters on Hydra's surface, but there is more evidence to back this theory up. If all the moons form from the same impact, then surely they're made of the same stuff, right? Well, yes, yes they are. As well as capturing these stunning photos of Pluto and its moons, New Horizons also took some infrared images to find out exactly what these moons are made of. Looking at this particular band of the infrared spectra that covers the reflectance of ice, you can see that Hydra's surface follows the same reflective pattern as pure ice. Pure ice is just a fancy way of saying ice that's made up entirely of water. Plotting the data collected for the other moons, and you can see that both Nix and Sharon's surface also contain a lot of ice, where the surface of Nix is practically pure ice. The New Horizons data backs up years worth of Hubble observations that studied the light reflected off Pluto's moons. One such observation was that Hydra rotates chaotically. What does that mean? It means there's no fixed day length on Hydra, or any of the smaller Plutonian moons for that matter. Looking at Pluto and Charon for a second, these two objects are tidally locked, meaning the same side of Pluto is always facing Charon and vice versa. Therefore, they both have a constant rotation period of 6.4 days. The smaller Plutonian moons don't have a constant rotation period, and the length of a day varies wildly, sometimes taking 20 hours to complete a rotation, and other times taking as long as a week. And to add to the confusion even more, these moons don't rotate on a fixed axis, but instead tumble through space. If you were to stand on the surface of Hydra, one day you could watch the sun rise in the east and set in the north, and the next day it would be completely different. We refer to this rotation as chaotic because there is no way to predict exactly what the length of a day will be, or what direction it will follow. So what's causing this chaos? It's the ever-changing gravitational influence of Pluto and Charon. Because every object in the system orbits a single point, the barycenter, the distance between Pluto and its smaller moons, is constantly changing. At one point, Hydra will be close to Pluto, and then to Charon, and then both at the same time, and this ever-changing distance, coupled with Hydra's odd shape, makes it impossible to predict how this little moon rotates. When New Horizons flew by Hydra in 2015, it measured its rotation to be just 10 hours, but this was during a very brief encounter. 
who knows what a Hydrian day will look like on this chaotically tumbling moon when the next probe flies by.